Shalom. Kol Leila Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Erkal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai to the 144,000. Double honor respect to the apostles and elders and great most of them. Coming back at you with another lesson. A sword is being furbished. <clears throat> so I'm going to read this disclaimer and go into the lesson. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, recording, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So a sword is being furbished. Let's play the video. <clears throat> Man, I went to the gun store today, y'all, to grab myself some extra artillery, to treat myself to something nice for these festive times that we living in. And when I tell y'all I was the only black person in there, I was the only black person in that motherfucker. And, and I go to this one all the time. This is the like the main shop and range that I go to. So every time I went in there, I ain't been, I ain't always been the only black person. But this time was different because I'm like, yo, I'm just going to run in there on my lunch break, grab my what I want real quick and just dip out. When I tell you, and it was like 1.30, bro, 2 o'clock at the latest. When I tell you, bro, these white folks was piling in this bitch, you would have thought this shit was some type of convention, bro. Like, I seen a group of like maybe 18, 19 at the oldest year old white boys in there. Each one of them white boys had like two rifle bags and shit. Getting ready to go to the range. They treating that shit like it's laser tag. Chopping it up all oh, yeah, talking about school and all this other shit. Then you got all these other white dudes in there with their wives. Bro, they grabbing ammunition. They grabbing silencers, bipods. I'm like, yo, man, this shit is fucking crazy, bro. And I'm like, this shit is wild, bro. I had to grab myself some extra ammunition because I'm like, yo, y'all not about to leave me with nothing, bro. Leave me out here high and dry like that. It's like, fuck that shit, bro. I was like, damn, maybe I should buy me something else. This shit is fucking ridiculous. And I know it's election time, so, you know, these NRA type of motherfuckers start losing their top a little bit and go over the edge. But, bro, this was, this was different because I didn't been to the store and the range around election time before. And it was never like this, bro. Not no one o'clock on a weekday. I know it's Friday and shit, but one o'clock on a weekday, people bringing their whole fucking families. And I looked on their website too. It wasn't no type of special event or nothing, bro. These folks was not fucking around, bro. Every white person that walked in that bitch, they was headed straight to the range and had like two, three rifle bags with their ass, bro. They was not fucking around. I'm like, man, my people got to hurry up and get in here and load up because I don't know what the fuck they doing, but they damn sure ain't playing. I'm seeing just listening to the way he speaks. This man is walking in darkness. There's no such thing as white people. There are Edomites, according to the Bible, Romans. And you look like you just stepped out of a predator movie with that hairstyle. Okay, fighting Arnold Schwarzenegger. So a lot of Israelite men are playing games. They're not paying attention to the signs. They're carnal. They're just walking in the flesh. So, when you look at this thing from a spiritual eye, the and I like this title, Keep Your Eyes Peeled. Stay alert, in other words. In other words. So, looking through a spiritual lens, people, nations are back in their lot. You have Edomites preparing for doing what they do living by the sword and shedding blood because they see that things are transpiring, getting worse. The pot is heating up, if you will, here in the political and economic landscape of America. They can sense that. The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. 
So Esau is going to fall back on what he does best, living by the sword. Everybody is back in their lot. Nero is back in his lot. Pharaoh and all his hosts, all his cohorts. <clears throat> so I want to go here. Pharaoh is that king of Babylon. So, and right now, that's looking like Donald Trump. But we'll see. I want to go here. So we're going to stay with the scriptures. There's no reason to turn a lesson into a dissertation, a doctorate's degree presentation. We're keeping our words few. Let's go to Psalms 22. When you read Psalms, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is speaking through King David. King David has the Holy Spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Anyway, let's get to it. <coughs> Psalms 22. Let's go to verse 19. Be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. So Yahweh Shai is giving King David the spirit of prophecy. Past, present, and future. Deliver my soul from the sword. See? So remember, Esau is blessed with the gift of the sword. That sword is bio warfare. Chemical warfare, nuclear warfare, germ warfare, so forth and so on. <clears throat> Psalms 22. I'm going to show you how this fast forwards to the future. And that happens in many different chapters throughout the Bible. Psalms 22 and 20. Deliver my soul from the sword my darling, from the power of the dog, Edom, Esau. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. The unicorns is the satellite communications dish network we have. When you look up a unicorn or satellite dish, it looks like a unicorn. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Make this quick. See? The Bible is an amazingly accurate book. It's not talking about a horse or the dildo sticking out of its forehead. That's bugged out. Bugged out. It's talking about the satellite dish communication network. That links into the internet. The internet. I'm not going to make this long. Won't be able to. So let's go back to that. <clears throat> Psalms 22. Verse 21. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation while I praise thee. See? So that's being done across the worldwide web. The house of David is teaching. And the internet, primarily YouTube, is doing the major lifting. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. There's a distinction being made here. Not just the house of Jacob, but the elect are those that fear the Lord and his name. So that we don't miss that. <clears throat> ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye, the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye, the seed of Israel. So this is the Israel of God so that we can understand the elect. 
Let's keep going. So his sword is being furbished. So he who inherited the blessing of the sword is furbishing that sword. Now, the main sword in these last days is going to be the nuclear missiles. That's the main sword. But there are also smaller swords, like medical martial law. And I can't go into detail. The Karax, the Karagma. And we got to look words up if we are amongst the Lord's elect. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis 27. So Bible prophecy provides us a compass by which to know where we are and what direction of travel we are heading towards. Our direction of travel. <laughs> Let's go here to Genesis 27 and 40. <clears throat> the book of Genesis chapter 27. Let's go to verse 37. Genesis 27, verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? So Esau is looking for his blessing. And the way the Most High did this is very, it appears to be very cold, but it's righteous. He gave Esau a blessing or a curse in disguise of a blessing. Now say that again. Esau inherited a curse disguised as a blessing. He that liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. <clears throat> Keep going. Genesis 27, verse 38. So Jacob is going to be set up as lords over all nations, including the Edomites, just like it was under the house of David. <clears throat> under the throne of David. Genesis 27 and 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So just like today, the words of prophecy has no place in him. He's being consumed by the word. And great fear is falling upon him. <clears throat> and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So they have the fatness of the earth, the great exotic islands, like Epstein Island, just one of thousands. They have the oil reserves, the gold reserves, the silver reserves. They have the best real estate, if you will, around the world. They are the land owners or the lords under this kingdom, pursuant to Job 9 and 24. But it's temporary under Satan. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. They're ruling over the four corners of the earth in these last days, since they came back during the Renaissance or rebirth. Let's look up this word, <coughs> fatness. <coughs> fatness. Mashaman. 
mashaman. Robust. Rich. See, this is the rich man Yahashua was talking about in the rich man, poor man parable. But to be more specific, it's Amalek, the small hats, ruling in the last days. And the small hats are divided. And if I say certain words, they're going to mess with the video. But the small hats, I'm talking about Z-I-O-N-I-S-T, <clears throat> the ruling, the elites, international bankers. See, fattest, that's funny, the fattest places. An overgrown baby that's overpaid, not born again, but wicked, wearing a little hat. Stout, see, he is more stout than his fellows, pointing at the daughter Babylon, but from a macro scale or a big picture, the entire house of Amalek. <clears throat> Oil, I can't make this up. Oil, fat, fatness, richly. They're the rich man in these last days. <clears throat> Genesis 27, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered, and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Remember, this heaven is rulership. The Bible says that the Lord's sword shall be bathed in heaven. So this kingdom is going to pass away by a nuclear missile thrusting through the heart of it. Basra, which the military wing or the hammer of the earth is America, the daughter of Babylon. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So they came back or were reborn into prominence, rulership. They were subdued and subjugated under the Davidic dynasty, followed by 40 years of peace under King Solomon. So now the cycle is coming back around for the re-emergence of the house of David. Jacob is the beginning of the new eternal kingdom of promise to come. Esau represents death, sickness, and the end of this old world or the old age. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shall have the dominion that thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck. So they're furbishing the sword right now. When a warrior in the ancient world would furbish his sword, it was to create a glittering, shining effect. So ultimately, the nuclear missiles is what it's referring to. But there are many swords, like getting something insert it into you. See, let's go here. Right here. Habakkuk 3, verse 11. <clears throat> the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation at the light of thine arrows. They went and at the shining of thy glittering spear. So the warriors would furbish their weaponry. Why? To create a spirit of fear. When you see swords shining, coming towards you, and spears glistening, reflecting sunlight, it instills fear. 
on the battlefield. Let's <coughs> go into that word. Glittering spear. Glittering spear. Habakkuk 3 and 11. Let's get that real quick. So warriors would do this. They would shine their shield, their swords, their spears. Habakkuk 3 and 11, the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows, they went and at the shining of thy glittering spear. So this is Jehovah Shine coming back with the host of heaven and the great father ship. And there's going to be many fighter ships escorting the great father ship. Let's look up that word. Shining. Naga. Naga. Bright. Brightness. See, it's going to be fire. High energy, concentrated laser beam fire. So you're going to have the nuclear missiles and the fire from the laser and chariot fire from these uh, so-called UFOs. Nuclear missiles are going to set it off followed by high energy concentrated laser beam fire from these so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Glitter, Barak, Barak. Lightning, gleam, flashing sword, bright, glitter. See? <laughs> Flashing. So his sword is being furbished. Ezekiel 21 and 9. <clears throat> Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. So that word furbished is being made right, being made ready. Let's look it up. Furbish to create a shining effect. So it's going to be little skirmishes leading up to the nuclear missiles and finished off by the laser and chariot fire of the chariots of the Lord, the so called UFOs. See, to be furbish, <coughs> bright, sharpened, polished. See, polished. So the warriors would do that to create that spirit of fear and intimidation. <clears throat> to make bare or smooth, to scour and polish, to make ball. When I wet my glittering sword, <clears throat> so it's being made for precision killing, precision killing. Ezekiel 21 and 10. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? I contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. So this is not the time to be playing games, but to be leaning forward in the foxhole, battle ready in the battle positions. Standing on our watch diligently <clears throat> because the Lord is preparing a killing field and he have given it to be furbished that it may be handled his sword and he have given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. See, so these Edomites are war ready. They're making preparations. They're prepping 
They're building underground escapes, putting together bug out bags. A bug out bag is not a Jake that's out of his damn mind. It's a quick grab backpack with food, supplies, medical aid, things of that nature. Map, compass, water, <laughs> flashlight. So they're ready. Jake is hanging out at the club doing a running band and beatboxing and, and break dancing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And doing birthday parties. And he had so that this is why King David said, Deliver me, O Lord, from the wicked which is thy sword. I think that's uh Psalm 17. Let's go ahead and get it. <clears throat> so the sword is multiple killing instruments. But ultimately, the nuclear missiles finished off by the high-energy concentrated laser beam fire from these so-called chariots of the Lord. No, so-called UFOs. They are the chariots of the Lord. Psalm 17. Uh, Psalm 17 and 12. Light as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. So you watch this. Sometimes the scriptures fast forward to the future. A day is nothing to the Most High, but like a 24-hour period to us. Or a thousand years is nothing to the Most High, but it's like a 24-hour period period to us so it's easy to project with us from today until tomorrow no different from the most high he does that within a 1000 year period but to him it's a 24 hour day like an unto how we look at it if that makes sense a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day that's why the scriptures can fast forward into the future so easily. Let's go here about that lion. Psalms 22, verse 21. Let's go to 20. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. So King David, through the spirit of Yahushai, is now fast forwarding into the future time frame of the last ruling empire of Edom, Rome, America. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns, from these satellite communication dishes. <clears throat> Not Jake with a bullhorn standing outside talking about black consciousness and Egyptology, Egyptology, bug out. <clears throat> okay, where are we? Let's close out here. So that is what it's getting into in the last days. Let's go back to Psalms 17 and 12. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were, a young lion lurking in secret places. See, so that's ultimately getting after the elites, like the Rothschilds ruling out of London. But collectively, it's the dragon, their entire organization, that's coming after the Lord's elect. <clears throat> so they're ruling over the world today. like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So this is going to be a global pursuit 
but the major deliverance is going to take place in the daughter of Babylon, America. Remember, the elites rule the world, and they're going to send hit squads and mercenaries to every major city and region. <clears throat> so that greedy lion is getting after the shadow government, the global elites, the international bankers that inherited the fatness of the earth. You're not a greedy lion if you just own one little real estate plot or one lot of land. Bug out. That's not a greedy lion. A greedy lion owns an entire island estate. So it's talking about the elite. <clears throat> Ezekiel 21, verse 11. And he have given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh. And you do that when you're trying to get somebody's attention. You hit your thigh to get your point across or to make your message clear, heard. So a lot of Jakes are still in La La Land, basing themselves in the temporary grace period. And they're not using it to make themselves right, to meet the bridegroom. They're just squandering time away. Is that a malicious? First Peter 2, verse 15. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, that with well-doing, he may put to... For so is the will of God that with well-doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. So we are here to serve, laboring in the gospel of the good news, that the Lord is going to deliver his elect of the house of Jacob that no harm is going to touch his saints. Now, there are going to be some that are going to die as martyrs or witnesses for this gospel. But the dead in Yahawashai and Hamashiach shall be raised up first. So there really is no death. But passing over, passing away, or transitioning from one phase to another, Whenever you look at water, when it's moving, it's in a living state. And then if it heats up, it evaporates into a mist. It didn't go away. It just changed from one state to another. But if it's dead in the winter, if you will, or frozen, it still did not go away. It just changed its form or state. Our spirits are similar. <clears throat> anyway, this is not the time to be bogged out and still asleep because the Lord is furbishing his sword and he's using the wicked to do that, that they were created to do. So every nation and every man, woman, and child are back in their lots. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So the wicked are reserved unto the day of judgment. So they're going to be used to wield or to swing the sword 
and then they're going to be used as bad vessels of a bad example of how not to live. Vessels created for destruction or vessels created to be destroyed, tailor-made to be used as a bad example. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, or Call Kadash, Barak Atham, Palm Yasharala, and the Five Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.